Amen. Now let's see here. This stinks. That stinks. You stink. I stink. Nevaeh stinks. Autumn's feet stinks. This whole thing stinks. And Sarah, right? Sarah Rourke? I'm going to tell you a secret, okay? You want to tell everybody? Tell, tell everybody the secret that I just told you. Who heard it? I bet a boy will hear it. His wife's feet stink. Amen. Don't get too close. She's not wearing socks this morning, okay? Now, let me tell you a little story. When I was little, and I, I would be going on a road trip to Florida, or we would just even be going home from school, I didn't like to wear socks. Who likes to wear socks? Raise your hand. Nobody likes. Y'all are a bunch of liars. You don't like to wear socks, and you know it. Socks are awful. Socks are terrible. They burn you up. I sweat all the time, and then take my socks off, I feel better. So I'd take my shoes off in, in the car, And within two seconds, my mom and daddy would be going like this. Trey, did you take your shoes off? And I'd say, yes. Put them back on, you stinky thing. My feet really used to stink. And here, here's the thing. I've been thinking about feet this week because I went to the daycare preschool room in uh, school this week. And Candler, where's Candler? He took my shoes off of my feet forcibly, <laughs> put them on his hands, and proceeded to go around the table like a raging moose. And uh, we have a video of that this morning. I want to see if we can play that for you. Everybody uh, turn your, look little kids and big kids. Smell my foot. I was trying to get him to smell my feet, and he actually did it. It don't stink that bad. Come on, guys. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, I want to ask you right now to take one of your shoes off, everybody. Everybody take one of their shoes off. And I want you... To throw that shoe out here. Throw it right at me. Hey, when they tell you the front row is where the action is, that, that's the truth, hey amen? We look like a bunch of holy rollers in here where they're kicking our shoes off. Now, I would like for um, Coulter to come here. Now, Coulter, there's a gray shoe out here that's got a note in it. Can you find it? Hurry. Find that, find that note in that gray shoe. It's a little piece of paper. You got to look in them shoes. You find the gray one? Is there a piece of paper in there? Yay. Okay, now we need somebody to come here and read it. Now, let's see here. Uh, Jacob Cody, come here and read this thing. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Now, that shoe has a mind of its own. It wrote this note, and Jacob's going to read it for you. My name is Stinky Feet. I live here in these nice little church shoes. Sometimes you don't wear any socks, so I don't stinker and stronger. <laughs> Sometimes I don't, you don't wear socks, and I get stinkier and stronger. My wife wrote this. Please help her. Another time you stepped in a puddle and water got inside these shoes and you don't dry me out now my what is it <laughs> now my stink is here to stay you'll never be able to make these shoes clean again all right let's give him a round of applause for that now the point of this lesson is and we're closing here in just one 45 seconds, okay? The point of this is, that shoe has been in the water, it's been in the dirt, it's been in, it's been all up in your shoeless, sockless, nasty, stinky feet, smelling gym sock, nasty, okay? And it's saying you can never be clean again because you're going to have to keep using that shoe. 
But I happen to know, kids, and I want you to pay close attention who this shoe belongs to. And I want you to uh, imagine that this shoe is the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world, right? This shoe belongs to Braden. Braden hogs it, correct? Now, what's on the bottom of your sock? Or in your sock, really? What's that say, brother? Covered by the blood. He's in the world. He's in a stinky situation. He's covered in it all day long. But he happens to be covered by the blood of Jesus. And it doesn't matter what's around him or beneath him or above him or below him. He's covered in the blood. Amen? And so, kids, this week I want you to think about this. When life really stinks, listen up, Levi, look. When, when life really stinks, just remember you're covered in the blood. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, I pray that you'd bless these kids. Uh, God, please help the process of putting on their shoes to be quick this morning. And God, we pray for our service. We pray for the choir. We pray for Pastor Chris as he preaches. And I pray a special prayer over all of our young families and these kids and our teenagers who came up to support them today. In Jesus' name, amen.
put your hands together and help us sing. Are you glad you're saved this morning? thinking the other day you know there's some things in churches that we can fix there's some things you can get motivated to do certain things you know somebody that's lazy you know they get to hurting a little bit they'll get to moving you, you get you get hungry you can fix that you can get something to eat right get thirsty you can go get something to drink but you know what we can't fix dead now stay with me I said we can't fix dead a church that's dead 
man can't fix. A person that's dead, man can't fix. But aren't you glad that we serve a God that's the resurrection and the life? Amen. <laughs> Some things only God can fix. We can't fix lost, spiritually speak. We can't fix that. But God can. God can fix that. Boy, I tell you, that, that puts something down deep in me this week, knowing that these things I can't fix, there's things I can work on. And I can do, try to do better at certain things, but some things only God can fix. And I'm glad that he's the one that can fix it. Amen. Are you glad you're saved after that song? <laughs> Boy, I am too. Hallelujah. God's given us a beautiful day. And this is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice. Amen. Brother Danny, you and Tiana stand up, would you? And that's little baby Isaiah right there. Look at that brand new youngin' right there. Look at that. That's the little prophet right there. He's a major prophet, Isaiah. Amen. He, aren't you proud of that little youngin'? Boy, I'm proud of them. Amen. Boy, I'm telling you. It's just wonderful. All these babies that's being born. I told Crystal, I said... I'd like to have another. And she said, you didn't have the other four. <laughs> hey, man, all the women got happy right then. Eh? <laughs> How many of you here at your first time visiting this morning? Can I see your hand? First time visiting. God bless you right here on the front row. Done had shoes thrown at you. Already. <laughs> well, we just treat people like family. God bless you. Anyone else? First time visitor here, main floor. Must have changed some lights. I feel like I'm getting a tan right now. I can't see you up there. Any, any in the balcony? First time visitor. Yep, we got one front and center, middle, middle section right there, Taji. What about second time visitor? I'm a second time visitor. Any second time visitor? Second time I've been here. All right, we got two right here. Danny, right here on the front. Got two right over here. God bless you. God bless you. We didn't have many prepared this morning for them cards. They must have thought we weren't going to have visitors. Amen. He's coming. All right. Thank you for being here. Let's give our visitors a round of applause. Thank you for being here today. God bless you. God bless you. Um, just so you know, before we go any further in the service, well, we got a message from one of our local pastors. He was our former assistant here, Israel. And I don't know if it was him. It could have been somebody else. But they're going to have prayer over at the high school at noon today. Prayer for the school system here, right here in Hayesville. They're, they're having some troubles, bad troubles. I mean, things going on. And they don't have the answer for it. But I do. Jesus. It's an authority issue. I can tell you that with any school, any workplace, it's an authority issue. Where God's not the authority, there's going to be trouble. And so we need to allow God to be the authority of the school and the people that God puts in the position there for them to be able to follow in authority. You know, the Bible teaches us that if we work for somebody, we're to walk in obedience. Did you know that? And when we don't, then that's a sin to us as believers. Now, we're not supposed to transgress against God's law, but we are to walk in obedience unto those that are over us. And so, we're going to try our best. They said it for noon. <laughs> Who sets a prayer time at noon? I've got to find that one out. Man, we're just getting warmed up at noon, right? Right in the middle of the message. So I'm going to make a deal with you. We're praying the Lord have his way in the service. But if we're not over there at that field, we might be blackballed here in the, in the community for not, you know, being a part of that. So it is important. It is important for us to be a part. But what we are going to do is we're going to worship the Lord while we're here, right? Amen. We're going to worship the Lord. Somebody may need to be saved. 
Um, but I do want to challenge you. What I don't get, God laid a message on my heart to preach. And I'm just going to give a short introduction this morning to it. But tonight, I'll be preaching the rest of that message. So we want everybody to come back tonight. Some of you haven't been coming on Sunday nights. It'll help you, I promise. Won't hold you long. It's going to be good. And I'm going to start with the title of it this morning. And, that t- and my birthday's Wednesday. Now, don't y'all forget that, okay? I won't be here Wednesday, but don't y'all forget it, all right? I got to be in West Virginia on Wednesday night to preach. Brother Kyle will be for Yeah, I'm going to. I'll be glad to take, take you home. He, he's, he's singing right now, Country Road, Take Me Home. All right. Um, but we are we're excited about what, what the Lord's doing here at the church. Next, next Friday is going to be the 24th of May, and that's going to be our youth retreat. We're going to be starting Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Great meetings going on, kids coming in from different states, and, of course, our own. Very on, it's going to be a powerful, powerful series of meetings. You don't want to miss those. Friday night, we'll be starting at what time, Brother Lucas? Seven, seven. seven o'clock. We never started at seven before. We'll be starting at seven this year. Seven o'clock. Okay. Um, also, on Saturday, we'll be back here again, seven, 7 p.m. on Saturday evening. And then on Sunday, it'll be normal service schedule, except there'll be no Sunday school hour for the adults and for our teenagers okay and and the middle school classes the rest of them will have Sunday school the smaller kids but we'll congregate in here at 10 a.m. next Sunday morning and it's going to be a great time Um, Winston Parish Dr. Ralph Sexton Jr.'s grandson will be speaking next Sunday morning along with myself so you're going to get double barrel shotgun preaching Next Sunday morning, starting at 10, okay? And you don't want to miss Dr. Ralph Sexton's grandson. You don't want to do that. Well, we love you. We're going to ask our ushers to come at this time as we receive this morning's tithes and offerings. If God puts it on your heart to give something special for the, for the youth retreat and for the expenses, please, please do so. We've, we're down on our kids this year. And so what we take in goes to further ministry. So if you can... If you feel like giving, we'd love for you to give to that. Our ushers coming as we pray. Kind Jesus, we love you. We thank you for this day. Bless this offering today and bless our people and our service. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost and all God's people said, amen. Let's stand together.
God's done for me. And nobody knows what my family's went through in the last several months. But um, Chris and my husband got down here and uh, prayed for me and gave me a prayer cloth and told me to keep it under my pillowcase. And that was on a Sunday. I think it was the second Sunday in February, if I remember correctly. And all hell come against me that Saturday before that Sunday. I didn't even want to be here to be, to be honest with you. And came here and I got the prayer cloth and went and done as they told me to do. And Monday morning, Chad calls me every morning to check on me. And um, he said, how are you feeling this morning? I said, I can't even get out of the bed. For 17 years, I've had... My right hip hurt me so bad I can't even stand to walk. And it's the way I work every day. And I've been praying for years for God to touch me. I take 2,500 milligrams of ibuprofen to, be up to get up to walk to work. Um, for 17 years I've hurt. And finally I told Leslie I can't stand the pain anymore. You're going to have to do something for me. i got to go get surgery or something. And I had a doctor's appointment. But Monday I woke up and I was so discouraged. And I think Chad was too. When I told him I couldn't hardly get up out of the bed. I heard all day that day. Tuesday I got up the next morning. He said, how are you doing this morning? And I didn't have no pain at all. And I'd, I'd brag on God, you know. And Satan would come against me with something else and I'd start to hurt just a little bit I'd say not today Satan I ain't got time time for you I got up this weekend and God knew I was going to stand right here today <laughs> Satan come against me again yesterday couldn't hardly stand to walk again I thought Lord I know you touched me I ain't hurt since February 18th I know you healed me God I want to be able to stand on stage and tell what you've done for me Chad gets up this morning. He said, how are you feeling today? I said, I feel like a new woman. I said, I ain't hurting nowhere. I'm going to try to sing you a song this morning. But thank God for healing my body.
I got that holy thump up there. My palms are sweating and my hands, my heart's a thumping. I won't take but just a minute, but, you know, the Lord won't leave you alone. <clears throat> Somebody needs to hear this. I've had just the weight of the world on my shoulders, and it's going to come to an end. This not my, I mean, the world's not going to come to an end, but <laughs> the weight's going to be lifted off my shoulders this week. There's just some, a lot of things going on in my family. But I was praying, and the Lord just simply said to me, everything you're worried about is in the palm of my hand. And don't you know that he's got a big old hand? And everything we're worried about is so small when it's compared to the palm of his hand. And it's not going anywhere because his hand is big. And our worries compared to his palm are small. And so everything, somebody needs to hear that everything you're worried about is in the palm of his hand. And he's got it. And now my palms can stop sweating. Amen. Uh, Sister Kim, she called for the elders of the church to come anoint her and pray for her. And with more of the things that we've already heard today, I think God would like to touch her. Amen. He's no respecter of persons, is he? Brother Brad's going to stand in for uh, Brother Michael and Stefan and uh, their, their dad. God touched him. He had a stroke yesterday. He's at the VA hospital in Asheville. And folks, we believe that God is a healer. We sure do. We, we believe that. If we didn't believe, we wouldn't practice what the Bible teaches to practice. We have faith. Kim, it's your back. It needs your back. Her back's hurting. Church, how many of you believe that God can touch these? If you don't believe, we ask you to step out. But we believe in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Kind Jesus, we come before your throne of grace. God, we pray right now that you touch Brother Nelson. God, Nelson Chastain needs your touch. God, we pray that you bring him out, Lord. They say that he's lost sight in one eye. But God, we pray, Father, that you restore that vision. God, you remove, Lord, any issue he may have. You've let him live. God, when they said he would die, Lord, I pray that you would just heal him right now. God, we believe, Lord, in your power. We believe in your presence and we believe in your word. And God, we ask that you touch Nelson Chastain right now. God, we pray for Sister Kim, Lord. God, that you touch her. Her back is hurting, Lord. We know that she's a hard worker for you in your kingdom. God, she works hard for her son. God, I pray, Jesus, that you bring healing to her back right now. You were wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you, but with your stripes we are healed. And God, we pray right now, Father, that you touch her from the top of her head to the sole of her feet right now. In Jesus' mighty name, God, we touch and agree on these two prayer requests right now. Lord, that you heal them. And God, we'll give you praise and honor and glory for what you do right now. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the sweet, sweet Holy Ghost Spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people said, Amen, Amen. amen. Can you give him praise? God bless you. His sisters want to be anointed right now on behalf of a, a friend of hers that has a gene that possibly could be turned into something. But we, we bind that by the blood of the Lamb. 
and also her daughter's been having heart palpitations and she has health issues but we believe now in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Ghost kind Jesus God we pray Father that you touch these situations Lord these prayers that's been brought Lord before your throne God these things that's been worrisome God we present them at your altar Lord God I pray for this one that has this gene that could turn into something God I pray that you bind it Lord that it not be able to do that and God that it would be corrected by your hand of healing God we pray for her daughter's heart these palpitations God we speak Lord that heart to be in the right rhythm right now and God we pray Jesus that you would touch her with her health issues that she's having God you are the one that can fix all things God your word says you do all things well God we ask you that you touch these requests now Lord and we touch and agree in faith and in prayer believing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the sweet, sweet Holy Ghost Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we all pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Bless you. Amen. Yes. Sister, we're going to pray for you right now too. Amen name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Ghost. Her back's hurting her. She can't hardly move. Lord, we come before you. I'm reminded of the man at the pool of Bethesda. Lord, he was at the pool of mercy. God, every time he went to get down in that pool, somebody else stepped in front of him. God, I'm glad that you call all people unto you. And God, we pray right now and we believe, Lord, that you will heal Miss Betty's back right now. God, I pray, Jesus, that you strengthen her, <laughs> loosen her back, and Lord, may the pain be gone. God, we agree in prayer. We touch and agree right now that you'll touch her. God, she'll give you glory and praise for it. God, we ask this now with your stripes, may she be healed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, in the mighty name of Jesus, and all God's people shouted, Amen, Amen, and Amen. <laughs> Love you, sister. I think we ought to just give God praise right now. Amen. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, God. <laughs> Is this not a sweet place to be? I mean, where people care enough to pray one for another, hold up one another. I'm telling you, we are, we are in a special place, and I'm thankful to be here today. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn quickly with me to uh, the book of Luke, the gospel according to Luke, and I want to get into the 15th chapter. Now listen, I'm going to tell you, I'm only going to introduce you uh, this message this morning and I hope that you will come back tonight to hear because God woke me up in the middle of the night this past week and he woke me up and when he did I got up and I wrote out the sermon I can barely remember it but I wrote out the message and went straight back to sleep and I've got that message that God is pressed upon me, and I promise you, it'll help you. God don't wake you up for nothing. There's a reason for it. And I preached a long time ago, when God pricks your heart or your mind in the middle of the night, and you wake up, He wants you to do something for Him. Or He's wanting to give you something that only at that hour, He wants to give directly to you. Boy, I feel God crawling all over me right now. You know why? Because I just, I'm thankful that he thought enough to wake me up. Amen. Praise be unto the Lord. Luke 15, verse 11. Let's stand for the reading of God's word. The Bible says, familiar text. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods 
that falleth to me. And he divideth unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. This is a little Jewish boy now. Now listen. And he would have fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. And I've always appreciated verse 17. Out of all of them right here. And the Bible says... And when he came to himself, can I get a shout right there? Well, when he came to himself, the Bible says, he said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare and I perish with hunger? He says, I will arise and go to my father. And I will say unto him, he's writing a letter right now. I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy Thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. Aren't you glad the father was looking for you? And had compassion and ran and fell upon his neck and kissed him. (laughs) And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the what? Now what did he say? What kind of robe? Oh, he wasn't getting a hand-me-down. This wasn't a yard sale. No, sir, he wasn't buying this at Walmart. Thank God he said, get the best robe. The best robe, he said. And praise God, not only did he say, bring the best robe, he said, Put it on him. Boy, that'll preach. And put a ring on his hand. Speaks of eternal love. Without beginning and without end. (laughs) And shoes on his feet. Praise God. If you got shoes on, you ought to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And bring hither the little skinny calf. It's about to die. Bring hither that one that that, that just ain't doing so well. No, he said bring what? Oh, thank God that one, that righteous calf. He said bring that fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to be merry. (laughs) Now his elder son was in the field. We won't preach on him. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing, and he called one of the servants and asked what things these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry. Well, it doesn't make sense, does it? You ever get jealous? You ever covet something somebody else is just doing real good and you think, well, I've been doing this all, all my life. I've been preaching all these years and here this one guy, he just comes in out of nowhere. This lady comes in out of nowhere and she's singing and getting favor and all this. Now, come on. That other one got that job promotion. You've been there longer and you know that you know the job inside and out and you deserve a raise and you didn't get and somebody else did. Listen, but this was his brother and he got angry and would not go in. He said, I ain't going. I'm not going to the party. Therefore came his father out. Aren't you glad the father comes out to you when you won't go in? And entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. Neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed For him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me. And all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again. And was lost and is found. Amen. You can be seated if you can. Listen, when we go back into the chapter here, you find I've preached on this many times throughout my ministry, and I have called this chapter, Luke 15, the lost chapter. 
the lost chapter. Why? Because there's three primary things that are lost in this chapter. And in this chapter, we find the lost silver. And this silver here, we, it has meaning to it. We know that silver rep- represents purity. It represents redemption. But, but also there in these stories, there are things that overshadow them, things that we can learn from them. And we learn the sorrow in these three stories. The sorrow over that which was lost. The shepherd sorrowed over the lost sheep. And the woman sorrowed over the lost silver. And, and the father was in sorrow over the lost son. And God grieves over those who are lost today. He grieves over that. We should sorrow over the lost as well. The Bible says that if we sow in tears, we'll reap in I said, if we sow in tears, we'll reap in? One more time. If we sow in tears, we'll reap in? Joy. Well, why aren't we sowing in tears? Why aren't we approaching the altars of the church on a weekly basis and and asking God to give us tears for those that we go to school with, for those that we work with, for those in our family who are lost and on their way to the devil's hell. I'm telling you, something's wrong with the Christian whenever we don't shed tears for those that we love who are lost and headed to a literal burning devil's hell forever and ever. Church, we ought to ask God to give us tears. You missed a good opportunity to clap there, shout there, or even approach the altar and weep. You know why? Because we are becoming a tearless church. And when we become a tearless church, then what happens is sinners don't have the opportunity to get saved like we should offer them. Oh, we can't save them. Oh, I understand that. But we can sure so in tears enough for the conviction power of the Holy Ghost of heaven when they walk in the church or when you walk in that place of occupation or you walk into that ball team that you're on and you walk in there to be with those people that they see the light of love. They know that you care. They know that they are praying for them. And when they see that in you, they're going to be convicted. It will bring more tears in your life the more the convicting power falls on the center church I'm telling you and I'll shout it again we need our tears back in the church we've got to have them oh where tears come from tears tears are the product of prayer tears are the product of praise Tears are the product of somebody getting in the position where they need to be, where they can talk with God and be able to have heaven hear your prayers. Don't you know the, the, the God of glory, his ear is ever open to every prayer that we pray and every tear that we shed. He bottles those tears up. Boy, in that funeral service yesterday, I, I couldn't help but think, There, here's this man that was 83 years old, 83 years. He was on his way to hell. And just a few days before that, we had the opportunity to change his destiny through the name of Jesus Christ. That man said, I want to be saved. He confessed his sins to a holy God. He got under the spout of the glory run out. He said, God, save me. God, save me. Tears began to roll down his cheeks. His daughter, that Angela began to weep with joy. Why? Because he come down to the last smile of the way. It was in the 11th hour of his life. It was 1159, but God still sent the mercy. God still sent the grace and God still sent the blood and God still sent the power and God still sent all of his glory and miraculously saved that 83 year old man and then thank God just a few days he made his way to heaven aren't you glad we serve a God that's on time every time it doesn't matter how lost you are how long you've been lost God loves you he wants to save you today Woo! hallelujah I'm glad I'm saved I said I'm glad I'm saved are you glad you're saved oh but we've lost our tears The reason we've lost our tears is because we have lost our time. 
We've lost our tears because we refuse to take time to enter into a state of prayer that we might have holy communion with a holy God and with holy communication and God to press our heart and bring things spiritually to our mortal minds. Those who really need our prayer. Oh, if I can encourage you, child of God, you pray, you pray, and you pray till you get your tears back. That's the missing element in the church today. It's sorrowing. And if God's sorrowing over lost people, shouldn't we be in sorrow over them? Absolutely. Not only that, I found the searching for that which was lost, the Bible says. The shepherd searched for the sheep. He went out and he searched for the sheep. And the woman searched for the silver. She swept and she looked and she lit the room trying to find the silver. God is searching for those who are lost in sin just as the father was searching for the son. I also find the shouting in this text. Boy, that's wonderful, isn't it? Shouting, why, over finding that which was lost. The shepherd rejoiced when he found his sheep. One little lost lamb, and here I am. Not only did the shepherd shout over finding the sheep, the woman shouted when she found the silver. (laughs) Thank God, and the father shouted when he found the son. Oh, my, well, now, no, that's not right. The son was coming back to him. Oh, but the father still found him. Not only that, the Bible teaches us that there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. In Luke 15 and 10, what joy there is in heaven when a soul gets saved. (laughs) Oh, just think back to the time you got saved, can you? The time that you you look back on your life when you got saved, it does every child of God good just to go back down memory lane and remember where you were and remember what happened and remember who was there. Thank God who was there, Jesus, amen. Listen, but there were other people I'm sure around when you got saved, some of you might have got saved by yourself and that's all right, there's still two, you and Jesus, amen. Let me tell you, I remember when I got saved. I'm trying to quit, and I know that we've got to go pray here in a minute, but I can't help it. Listen, I remember, for those of you, we've got new people here, and you've not heard this. I was nine years old. We were down in a little storefront church. just a handful of people down there, and we had two preachers, and that was Reverend Paul Mayfield. Stand up, Brother Paul, in the back. I'm telling you, he, he would preach the word on Sunday morning. Right there he is. Give him a hand. Thank God. Matter of fact, walk on down here, Brother Paul. Walk on down here, brother. Praise God. And then it was Brother Leonard. Brother Leonard's uh, down in, in Florida right now with his daughter. But listen, these two great men of God, uh, listen, they didn't go to Bible college. I don't even know if they even graduated through fifth grade or not. But I can tell you this, uh, they were called by God to preach the word of God. Listen, they might not have known all the hermeneutics and the homiletics of scripture and all of that, but I'll tell you what, they knew where their home was gonna be whenever they died because they trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. And thank God this man preached that morning. He preached hell hot and he preached heaven sweet. And then all of a sudden here come Brother Leonard. He's a much different preacher. And they were different even though they were brothers. And Brother Leonard got up there and all that ground that had been tilled up that morning and down at whoop, glory, down in my soul. All that gospel plow got down in deep. Turned over ground that had never been turned over before. And then that night, here came his brother, Uncle Leonard. And old great Uncle Leonard got up there. And when he preached, he preached in tears. Boy, those old tears run out them blind eyes. And thank God, whenever them tears began to run out and got on that heart of mine that had been plowed up and turned over, turned inside out, something got in me. I didn't go to the altar that night, but I remember when I went home, thank God that message trailed me. And the old hell 
hounds followed me back home. I, and I mean, they're yelping, you're on your way to hell. You're on your way to hell. And I went back there in that back bedroom on the right side of the house, right four by 16 at that time. And I laid down. And when I laid down, my sleep escaped me. It ran from me. And there the Holy Ghost stuck his finger out over my heart and said, you need to be saved. I said, oh, Lord, is it really time for me to get saved? I was nine years old. But you know what? I began to try to play it off with a little song. And God began to give me words. It was to an Eminem commercial, the jingle. And I began to sing. And I remember the words that I said. If you're not saved, hell will be your home. And boy, about that time, it really hit home with me. I got out of that bed. And I run down that hall. I said, Daddy, Daddy, help. He said, what do you need help with? I said, I need to be saved. Boy, I was a crying. I was a mess. I knew that if I died, I was going to hell. But Daddy took that old Bible and opened it up. And down beside that little coffee table, I began to read God's Word. And he said, son, God said if you call on him, he'll save you. And I called on the everlasting arm of God. I called upon Jehovah. I called called upon Jesus and when I called upon him thank God all of a sudden when I said I repent of my sins come into my heart all of a sudden here he came and he lives inside of me I jumped up and I shouted and I praised him and I called this man right here my pastor and I said Paul I said I gotta tell you what happened he said what happened I said I got saved oh and my I say all these years later thank God 35 years later I'm still saved I still belong to him Woo! hallelujah to the Lamb of God oh you know thank God somebody found me some places that I got found let me tell you I got found right there in mom and daddy's house Thank God it wasn't their home, Brother Paul, because their home's in glory. I like what Brother Leonard said. He said, I may live here, but my citizenship's in glory. Amen. I'm headed home one day soon. Not only that, Brother Aiden was there. Hey, Brother Aiden, the other day, he can't see hardly anymore at all. And Brother Aiden said, he talked to Lucas. He said, I can't see the Bible. He's got a magnifying glass. It looks like a Frisbee. Got a light in it. Looks like it got a spotlight in it. And that thing, I mean, you could see from the front of the book back to the back but he said I can't read it and Lucas got him the Bible on disc and you know what that man right there that taught Sunday school class uh, every day of my life that I can go back and remember and we all sat in there together and that man knew that Bible inside out you know what he told me this morning he said you know the Bible Lucas got me I said yeah and he said I read it I, I listened to it through in four weeks four weeks that's a leader right there. That's the kind of man I want to follow. I told Brother Eric, of course, I was being funny. I said, he ain't got a wife and kids. <laughs> he ain't got grass to mow. He ain't got mouse to feed. No, but you know what? He's in a place in his life, in a season in his life. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, if you missed it Wednesday, go back and listen to it. A time. There is a time for everything. And he's in that time where he's, he's got time to be in the Word of God more than any other time. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you this. In the first story, we see one out of a hundred lost. Now, I don't know how many hundred are here this morning, but there's a few. But are you one? There's 400 here this morning. Are you four out of a hundred? If there's one out of a hundred, are you lost today? Only you can answer that question. Only you know. Listen, with Angela's dad, her mama kept trying to say, answer for him. And I said, respectfully, ma'am, he's got to do the answering. Thank you, Lord. She didn't like it then, but she appreciated it later. You know why? Because we're all going to give an account. Every single one of us, man, woman, boy, girl, you're going to give an account of the good things, the bad things done in your body before the Lord. So what if you die, sir? What if you die, Papa, Grandma? What if you die, Mom or Dad? 
How about it, daughter, son? If you died today, are you 100% sure that heaven will be your home? A preacher, now don't be going there. Now, 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 just preach to us. Make us feel happy. Everybody got found and let's go home. Everybody don't get found. Everybody don't get saved that dies. I know we live in a world we don't want to upset anybody and what we'll do, we'll preach everybody into heaven. Doesn't matter if they're a serial killer and a rapist and an abortionist and an atheist. There's still somebody out there. There's some fool out there that's going to say they went to heaven. If you're not saved, don't ask me to preach your funeral because I'm not going to do that. I won't do it. I can't do it. Well, about a tenth of you were proud of that. He won't do it either, by the way. But if you died today, are you sure you're going to heaven? I asked that man, I said, well, he, I said, if you died, where would you go? He said, well, I'm going to heaven. This is pre-salvation. And I said, well, why do you think you'd go to heaven? He said, well, I'm a good guy. I'm good to people. You're not going to heaven because you're good. Matter of fact, according to the Bible, there's none good. There's none righteous. Romans 3, you can figure it out. Verse 10, you can read it for yourself. Not only that. What about this? Well, I do good things. You are not going to be saved by the good things you do in your life. No. If you go to heaven, you will go the same way everybody else has gone. It is through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and in Him alone. That's it. Church is not getting you to heaven. Membership's not getting you to heaven. Baptism's not getting you to heaven, but praise God, when you get a royal bloodbath, thank God, you're going to heaven. Amen. <laughs> praise God. As they come get a song, let me end with this. Brother Bobby and I were talking, and he said these words. I said it during the funeral yesterday. He said that C.H. Spurgeon said this. He said that a salvation that is not altered your lifestyle is more than likely never altered your destiny. Oh, oh, Spurgeon was just paraphrasing what the Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Corinth. <laughs> See, he said, we're a new creature. Old things passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I'm going to use, Do I'm going to use Dr. Weisenberger. Can I use you, Dr. Weisenberger? Come on, brother. He's an ENT. He's a smart man. Comes from a smart line of people. Amen. Amen. His dad just his dad just went home to be with the Lord. His mom's not far behind. But with all of his intelligence. And all of his education. Has it been three years yet? Four. Four. Time flies when you're saved. <laughs> Four years ago, I went to him. I went into his office. Had a spot on my back. I'm giving you the short version. He looked at it and he said, looks like cancer. He said, what do you do? He said, I'm a preacher, pastor. He had looked at my throat. I guess he heard that gravel. I must have preached a hard one before that. He looked at it. He said, you know, he said, I almost died recently. He said, I had a, pan a pancreas, pancreatitis, right? Got her. Took a helicopter flight down to Erlanger. Severe pain. You could see it when he was talking to it. He did not want to revisit that. He said, my wife had a stroke. She took an airplane, helicopter ride as well. He said, we've been thinking about going to church. And I said, I'm not here for this spot on my back. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. That's the truth. The comical part about that, I got so fired up, 
that I realized for the first time I was witnessing to a guy with my shirt off. <laughs> yeah, it didn't bother me. Finally, I put my shirt on and I finished it. I said, hey. And I said, are you sure? Do you remember this? I said, are you sure if you died today that you'd go to heaven? He said, well, I, I, I think so. And I said, it ain't think so. He said, it's no so. Do you? He said, well, I'm okay. He said, I'm, I may see you Sunday. And you know what I thought? He is not coming. He is not going to come. That Sunday rolled around. He's the second row inside aisle. He and his wife read. <laughs> There was a man right over here. I hadn't seen him lately. Don Johnson got up. He had a Widowmaker blockage. He made his way over here. He's needing prayer, needing anointed. He's sweating. He's about to die himself. He's going to get anointed. All the elders are up here. Doc gets up. He comes. And I was like, what is he doing? I've never, never seen this before. He didn't know what he was doing either. He just knew, I, I need something. And I'll never forget, it was right here. You remember? And I said, Doc, can I help you? And he said, yes. I said, what do you need? He said, I need to be born again right now. I said, yeah. Yes. And you know what? I got a man that's getting ready to die. We know I got a man here. And I thought, he can wait. He's already saved. He's not. Okay, Doc, we're praying for you first. He prayed through. He accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior. Okay, he was lost, but see, now he's found. <laughs> Best thing you can ever do. Amen. How many times you read the Bible through? I'm on five. He's on his fifth time in four years. He's hungry for God. His wife, it was about three or four weeks after that, she met me in my office. And Doc would send me a text. He'd say, I think she's going to get saved. <laughs> We went back there, and sure enough, she knelt down and said, Jesus, save me. I'm a sinner. I, I need you. Whew. Glory to God. Johnny, it pays, son. It pays. Keep asking. Keep telling. One day, you're going to get one. It's like fishing. You go fishing, you don't catch them every time. Oh, but there's some of those days. There's some of those nights. You got the right bait. The more you read the Word of God, the better bait you'll have. You know how to talk to people. Doc, I love you. I love you too, brother. Love your wife. Thank you for letting me use you. I could do, I could do you a commercial now for your business after that. Listen, let me tell you what people said about him. Before he got saved, they said, oh, his bedside manners are awful. He is mean. That guy is mean. He's a good doctor, but he's awful. He's mean. All of a sudden, I've had people come to me and say, something happened to him. <laughs> what in the world? I l that's right, brother. Shout on. Literally, people came to me and said, what happened to him? I said, I'll tell you, I was there when it happened. And they said, what? I said, he got saved. <laughs> oh, my. See, God makes changes. God makes changes in our lives. Boy, I'm just now feeling like preaching. Amen. <laughs> Listen, what are we, we're just bragging on the Lord, just bragging on what he does. Isn't it good once in a while just to tell people, look what God did for this one. Hey, let me tell you this about me. I was raised right and I was saved. I got saved when I was young. But you know what? I was like that prodigal. I, I went and I said, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do my thing. Oh, I wish I could go back and change that. But you know what? You may be like that. Hey, I made a lot of mistakes. I wish I could go back. No, you can't go back, but you can start today new. You can say, I'm, I'm going to start. Now listen, let's go back. If Doc would have died before he got in here on this altar and got saved, he'd have went to hell. But according to the Word of God, now he's on his way to heaven. By his testimony, what about you? 
Young lady, God's dealing with your heart. Young man, God knows. He knows the secrets of your heart and of your mind. I'll say this. I know that there are people that need to get saved this morning. It's a good reason to get saved because you don't want to go to hell. That's a good one. You can grow in grace enough to see that even greater reason is because God loved you unconditionally and gave himself for you on the cross. That's powerful. God's not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance as we bow our heads. If you're here today and you'd say, Preacher, I'm not saved. I want you to pray for me. Could you slip up your hand? I'll pray for you. I won't come. To... God bless you, sir. You are not saved. Someone else, I am not saved. I'm not saved. Pray for me. I'm not saved, or at best, I'm not sure. If I died, I'd go to heaven. Just slip up your hand. I'm not saved, or I'm not sure. Slip it up. Come on. Come on. Listen, there's a young lady here today. God spoke to you. You know that. Would you just care enough to raise your hand? That's me. You've been worried about this. You've been thinking about this. God spoke to you today, and he's been speaking to you lately. Would you raise your hand? Would you do that? God's going to get you. He's on your trail. Might as well get saved this morning. Someone else, I'm not saved. Pray for me. What about this? I've been saved, but I'm not right with God, and I know it. Things aren't right in my life, and I, I'm, I'm going to confess it by lifting up my hand. Could you do that? Sir, ma'am, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now listen. We ain't going to allow the devil to keep bullying us around. Listen, we are a children of God. We're not made to scratch with the chickens. We're made to fly with the eagles. Sir, you raised your hand, said you were lost. That's you. You said, I'm lost. Could you, could you look at me? You said you were lost, right? Come on and pray right now, sir. Come on. Come pray. Come be saved today. Dad, help this man to the altar. Lead him to Jesus. Hey, others, you just said, hey, I'm saved, but I'm not right with God. Would you step out right now? Come on, get, out, get on up. God bless you, brother. God bless you. Come on, ma'am, your hand went up, sir. Come on. Come rededicate your life to the Lord right now. Come on. Come on. You know you raised your hand. Step out right now. Come on. Come on, friend. Come on. God bless you. Step out right now while the Lord is calling. Step out and come. Say, Lord, I love you. Help me. You raised your hand and said, things are not right in my life. How could you sit back? How could you sit back and wait? Please come. Others come right now. Your hand went up. Please, I beg you. Oh, God, I beg you to come. With tears, we ask you to come. Oh, God. Oh, God, give us our tears back. God, help. Oh, Jesus, have your way. Lord, have your way. As we stand all over the building, others still need to come. Would you come? Oh, God, help people to come. Oh, Jesus. Please, Father. Please come. Right now, come on. Sing on, Luke. 
Yes, just come before the Lord. What would he want <laughs> with someone like me? Empty and broken. Oh, God. Ain't you, Maker? I've been praying for your brother this but through my son. I heard his voice calling my Somebody needs to get saved. And love like me. Young lady, God called you under the Lord. God, we pray. Washing my sins. This man has something he wants to tell you. Brother Paul. I'm saved, thanks for God. I have a disease. And they told me I would probably die with it, but I wasn't too sure. So I called up God, and he answered me. Amen. I heard him. <laughs> he said, I am here. Amen. Praise God, he was. I've known him all his life, but I've never got saved. Are you saved today? Praise to God, I am. <laughs> This man right here is going to talk to you a few minutes now. Oh, hallelujah. Just call on him, brother. Oh, thank God. Touch him. Touch him. <laughs> yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Listen, I still got a burden. I believe there's a young girl. I can point you out that God's been dealing with you and you hadn't surrendered. You ought to come be saved today. You ought to come. Listen, when you lay down tonight and go to sleep, you can say, I know. And if I die, I'm going to heaven now. Sing on, Luke. Oh, thank you, God. And love like rain came down on me. Yes. Wash it. Touch your keys. Touch your Lord. Into the sea. Oh God. And now I'm done. free. Thank God I'm free. His love like rain it came down on me. I tasted life from pride's bitter cup. I drank my fear till it all dried up and when I fall I die of thirst his healing water it quenched my thirst and love like rain came down on me yes he's doing a work washing my And Let's now let you I'm say it. With a mouth, confession is made unto salvation. His love like rain came down on me. <laughs> oh, sweetheart, won't you tell him what happened? I got saved. <laughs> Love you, honey. God bless. <laughs> That's proud parents right there. If one of you want to take take her back to the office and go with her, oh, that'll help her right there. Got a Bible for her. Going to counsel her a little bit. Hallelujah. Hey, I believe y'all done forgot. You remember what the Bible said, Luke 15, 10? There's rejoicing in the presence of the angels right now. Thank God. Oh, you can do better than that. I've heard some of you in a ball game. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. Thank 
Thank you, Jesus. You might say, preacher, well, we're late for that prayer over there. I don't know if we've ever been on time. Besides right now. <laughs> this is what matters. Souls getting saved. Oh, thank you, Jesus. People getting help. Let's pray together right now. Kind Jesus, Lord, we love you. God, we thank you for these two souls that's been saved this morning. God, thank you for your presence and your spirit. God, abiding in this place. God, I pray, Jesus, right now that you help all of these that have approached your throne. And God, I pray for Clay County Schools right now, Lord, and the darkness and the trouble that's plaguing them. God, I pray, Father, that, that they will, everyone, every employee, every parent will surrender to your authority. And God, that you put in place those, Lord, that will lead in godliness and righteousness. And God, that the teachers, Lord, God, you know that we've, we have faced teachers there in that school that said that they didn't want God there. They didn't want people there. God, I pray that you save them. Save those lost teachers. Save those atheists. Save them. Break that bondage that they're in. And God, I pray that you do a work in Clay County Schools, Lord. And God, for our Christian teachers over there that are struggling and they're trying and they're striving. God, I pray that you give them power. God, help them to overcome. God, we ask this now. God, that you move in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the sweet, sweet Holy Ghost Spirit and all God's people shouted, Amen. Can you give God praise? Amen. Brother Lucas announced. Uh, by way of announcements, please remember this weekend is the Carolina Mountain Youth Retreat. Uh, we want to invite everybody that can to come be a part of this weekend of the services. Uh, it's going to start Friday night at 7 o'clock. Jacob Berry will be here as long as uh, Wesley Campbell um, and Winston Parrish, as Brother Chris mentioned. So it's going to be a great weekend. As far as our needs for this weekend, we need folks to bring in Little, Debbie, little Debbies or individually wrapped desserts. If you can start bringing them in on Wednesday, that would be great. Uh, Friday, for desserts, we're hoping to have cookies and brownies. And then Sunday, uh, please bring desserts of all types. That's when you can bake your, the cakes and the banana puddings and, and um, that chocolate Oreo stuff that people make that always get gone before I get there. With gummy worms. And uh, that's what we're talking about. So uh, Sunday, uh, we're going to have food and, and eating all weekend. If you got any questions, please see Jenny uh, Hedden or uh, Sister Christy Rurick, and they'll be glad to help you with that. Also, all of our young folks that's going, we need to have your uh, Brother waivers. Brother Lucas, one second right there. They, uh, there's people here that probably don't know who Jenny Hedden is and Sister Rurick. If you don't know them, could you just raise your hand and say, I really don't know who they are? See, we don't want y'all to not help. <laughs> so what we're going to do is, Miss Jeannie, if you'll go out and stand in the middle of the lobby right there, out there at the back, she's making her way out there, and then that way you can talk to Sister Rurik if you'll join her. If she's oh she's oh they're over there praying. Well, thank the Lord. There you go. Proceed, brother. See them for any questions. Also, young folks, we need to have your medical and uh, waivers filled out and hard copies brought back uh, by Friday. And so if you have those, please uh, give those to S uh, Sister Janice or Brother David Byers. Um, one announce, uh, ushers, if I can get y'all to get the offering plates ready in the back. We meant to do this last Sunday for Mother's Day, uh, but we're going to take up a donation uh, this afternoon for uh, the Free Will Baptist Family Ministries. Uh, that's the children's home up in Greenville, Tennessee, that uh, Brother Jim McComas is the CEO of that organization now. And they always lift an offering uh, up, on, up on Mother's Day to benefit uh, the children's home. They have a crisis pregnancy center. They also have a... Um, a, a, a facility for, for elderly and assisted living. And so, uh, and that's based between Tennessee, Arkansas, and a few other places. They're doing a great work. And with all the focus yeah. going on uh, around abortions and things like that, they really step in and help uh, uh, women and families 
uh, during, during this time, and so we want to support them. And if you've got anything that you can give, we will send 100% of that to Free Will Baptist Family Ministries. Amen. And uh, like I say, we were supposed to do that last Sunday, but with all the Mother's Day things going on, we kind of for, uh, forgot to do that. But we're going to be sure to do that and send that to them and support that ministry. And um, if you ever get a chance to go up there, it'd be a great trip to go. It's got a great place, and I know it'll touch your heart seeing all those kids that's up there in the children's home and, um, and, and the work that they're doing up there. Amen. Thank you, Lucas. Also, just remember, next Friday night, 7 o'clock, Saturday evening, 7 o'clock, Sunday schedule is normal. So come. Bring, maybe you didn't have kids sign up for the actual camp. Bring them to the services, okay? It's going to be strong. I can promise you that. How many of you have never heard Jacob Berry? I've never heard him preach. Hold him up real high. Let me see. Never heard him. Oh, you're in for a treat. He's about that big. He weighs about 60 pounds. And I'm telling you, it is, he is amazing. He was one of them that they wanted to abort. Mama said no. And so please be here for that. You're going to enjoy it. Um, also, Wesley Campbell's going to be with us. Winston Parrish is going to be with us all here. It's going to be great. So we look forward to seeing you here for the weekend. All right? Yes. Okay, for all the teachers that teach classes for 12 and under here at the church, going to have a dinner at Brothers at 6.30 on Thursday. Which Brothers? Young Harris. Okay. So teachers, if you have questions, please see Brother Trey hey, on that. Tournament. Oh, well, yeah, just so we got, there's a big trophy back there. Hold it up there, Curtis, or Brother Rick. Look at that. Softball team won. Somebody had a walk-off homer last night, and our, t- our church won the missions uh, softball tournament. So thank, thank those that played in that. It's not about fun. It's about winning. No. Uh, it's, oh, there they are. Look at them. I did not play. I just showed up to get in the picture. And that's the truth. All right, folks, we love you. Listen, for those that care, let's go over to the Clay County Schools, uh, please, for everyone that can, uh, just go straight over there and pray. And I don't know what's going, going on, but we can go pray, okay? We have, let's do that. And let's get our hands in the air. I'll see you tonight as we finish this sermon. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. May God bless you. Be safe. See you tonight.